Good morning, I'm Sarah Nave, your dietitian here at Beacon Cancer Care, and welcome to Saturdays with Sarah. I am joined today by Kaylin Haney, and she is going to talk to you a little bit about our new event and our new program we have for you. Hi, thanks Sarah. Um, I am the practice representative here at Beacon, and we have a new program called Empowered by Beacon, and each month we will have a new series. Um, this month of May is on stress and anxiety, and um, Sarah is going to be bringing recipes to us that are going to help us cope with the stress and anxiety and um, help ease that for us. As part of the Empowered by Beacon series, um, Saturdays with Sarah will now include Sarah's Kitchen, where we're going to look at demonstrating some different healthy recipes for you and maybe a way that um, you can relate more to in your own home. With this month's stress and anxiety topic, we decided we were going to look at doing a healthy snack bar recipe. We know that stress can sometimes cause a person to eat or sometimes it causes a person not to eat, but I find often that a lot of times people are looking for snacks. And the great thing about this energy bar recipe that we're gonna demonstrate with you today is it has a lot of foods that actually have um, some research to support possibly helping with stress and anxiety. Do you think it's something that my kids would enjoy? I do, and the nice thing about this is you can kind of um, modify it with different ingredients that your children or yourself may like better than some of the other ones, so it's pretty versatile that way. We're gonna start great. first with a cup of oats, and these cup. are just quick oats um, that we're gonna add to the bowl here. Okay. And oats, I'm gonna try not to spill anything. <laughs> and oats are a really good source of fiber. They are a whole grain. And so um, they are something that's gonna help kind of keep our blood sugars stable throughout the day. So that makes them good for snacks or even a breakfast type item. Yeah. Um, next we're gonna add a half a cup of the wheat germ. Okay. And so wheat germ is actually the innermost part of the wheat kernel. And we get a lot of nutrients and fiber from that. And interestingly, when we buy white bread products, they have this part of the grain is removed. And so we lose those nutrients with those refined grains. And so um, it's a fun thing you can add to recipes or you can add it to yogurts or anything like that. And then lastly, we are going to add a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. You already have this measured out. Yeah. Me. Just pour it in there. Yep. And then if you want to just kind of stir it around, get yeah. mixed up a little bit. So that is going to be the base. Um, and then the rest of the stuff I'm actually going to use my food processor for. And so what's really nice about this part of the recipe is you can really modify the other ingredients that go into your bars. And you can also dictate how, how much you want this chopped. So some people like having their fruit and their nuts chopped more finely, where other people want it kind of more whole. And yeah. so you can kind of dictate that. <laughs> We're gonna start with first a half a cup of almonds. Almonds are actually kind of my preferred nut. Um, I'm not big on some of the other ones, but definitely a lot of options when it comes to this walnuts or pecans or something like that. Um, and something really neat about nuts and seeds is they're a good source of magnesium. And oh. did you know that sometimes um, Magnesium deficiencies can show themselves um, in forms of anxiety. No, yeah, I so, didn't know that. So sometimes just boosting up your magnesium in your diet can help with some of those anxiety symptoms. So, That's great, I'll remember that when yeah. I'm having yeah. some almonds. So we're gonna then add a half a cup of sunflower seeds, and again, another good alternative would be pumpkin seeds or something like that, or you can oh, I love pumpkin seeds. half and half. Um, and then we're gonna add the fruit. And so the purpose of the fruit is not only to add that fruit component, but also we'll add um, a sweetener. So not having to use sugar, we're gonna use a little bit of the natural sugars in the fruit itself. So I'm gonna add a half a cup of raisins. That's great, because I feel like we get enough sugar in our diet anyways. Exactly, I know. And then with the dried fruit, we get some of those vitamins and minerals that we don't always get with some of the different... Um... And what fruit is that? So this is the dried figs. And so um, a lot of times people always just relate figs to fig newtons. Uh -huh. But you can actually use figs in a lot of baking. And so it um, adds kind of a moisture component, but also adds that sweetness too. Awesome. And then we're going to add a half a cup of apricots. Ooh. So I love getting, apricots. It's a little full here. But it'll this work. looks so good, Sarah. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I'm going to um, just kind of lightly chop 
this. And again, this is where you really have the um, control over how finely you want to chop this up or if you want to make it more chunky. It's really kind of just up to your own personal preference. All right, so once you get this kind of chopped up to the de desired consistency, um, we're gonna actually add it back to the bowl that Kaylin originally started with her okay. ingredients in. And I just wanted to point out, if you don't have a food processor, you can definitely just chop these up by hand. Um, that would work just as well, or if you have a Vitamix or a Ninja or something like that, yeah, that's you can good. actually put all that in there. So, Keelan, if you wanna give that just kind of a yeah. quick little stir, oh. that spoon might work a little better. And then we're gonna add our last few ingredients to this. And so, to this, I'm gonna add, um, a half a cup of protein powder. And so actually the original recipe called for dry milk powder, but to find that right now is nearly impossible. Oh my goodness, so, the stores are crazy. Yeah. The nice thing is, is you can substitute in protein powder or peanut butter powder or something for that dry milk powder, and it works just as well. Well, that's so. great to know that those will substitute. Yeah, and then I'm gonna add, while she's mixing that, a teaspoon of cinnamon. And again, um, any spices you would like to put into this would work well. Um, herbs and spices have different antioxidant properties, and so those help our body fight inflammation, which is another thing that um, is uh, helpful for stress and anxiety. Yeah. So, all right, now the fun stuff. We are gonna add one third cup of honey. And so um, you really, you know, with the sweetener, you could add honey or you could add syrup or agave or something like that. It's really up to your preference. Um, I kind of like honey because it has some other components with it that you don't get with some of those other sweeteners. Um, but it's just really going to start to combine things. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we're going to add a couple eggs. And this is going to be kind of that final binder to our recipe. And then also adds a great uh, protein component to it as well. So if you want to mix those in, yeah. we're just adding two eggs to that. And then other substitutes or things you could add in are chia seeds or flax seeds. Um, you know, flax seeds and walnuts are a plant source of omega-3 fatty acids. And oh. so there is a lot of research to support um, omega-3s. That looks perfect. So now the next step is we're going to add it to a greased um, 9 by 13 pan. You can actually a little use a little bit smaller dish as well too if you like your energy bars to be a little bit thicker. So once I get this in here, we are gonna put it in a 350 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes until it gets kind of cooked. All right, so we let those bars cook for about 20 to 25 minutes and um, got they them look, sliced up. They look amazing. Yeah, they, they look, look really, so good. Really good. So. Um, like we said earlier, this is a great option for a healthy snack. Um, another good option would be for breakfast. I don't mm -hmm. know if you yeah. normally eat something like this for breakfast. No, um, and during breakfast I like to have, um, sometimes I'll have coffee, but a lot of times I'll have tea. Are there any teas that'll work for good for stress and anxiety? Yes, that's a great question, Kaylin. So there is some research to support um, chamomile tea and green tea. Um, and my recommendation would be a decaf type of tea or coffee because sometimes those um, symptoms of anxiety can be manifest with caffeine. And so, especially if you're having a time in your life where things are really stressful and you feel really anxious, limiting your caffeine intake is actually really beneficial. So a nice cup of tea like that would be excellent to Good. go with this. Um, other things, you know, with breakfast is um, we see that sometimes when people are struggling with low blood sugars because they haven't been eating really good meals, maybe they're eating things that are high in processed sugars and things like that, um, those signs of low blood sugars can also mimic symptoms of anxiety. So yeah. a lot of great options. And a lot of times um, breakfast foods on the go are not that healthy, so it's yeah. nice to have these already made and ready to go. Yeah. They I, look amazing. Yeah, I know and I think exactly and I know my kids are really busy and so we spend a lot of Saturdays um, out the door really early so this is something we make up and just bring with us for those breakfasts when we get to where we need to be. So That's a great idea. Should we try it? Yeah, right. I can't wait. Okay.